everybody what's going on <laughs> folks it's like i was just talking with y'all because i was hey folks aj the ceo here and i'm really excited because during the q a that i do this came in um this is the black magic studio camera 4k plus i'm really really excited about all of this I'm, I'm here trying to monitor to make sure everything is working fine um, let me unmute this for half a second so this is going to be interesting because I'm doing this from a distance now um, really? okay so I can hear myself fine so thank y'all so much I'm going to turn on um, against my better judgment I'm going to turn on the automatic um, comments so that because I can't step over here and just look at all the stuff like that. So if y'all have a comment, I'll be able to read it and go from there. Um, hello, hello. And I'm in the way of where the screen is. Maybe I should change these to a lower third. I think I'm going to do that so that I can see this a lot better all right so yeah so now i won't be in the way all right so the other thing is i'm excited because this is the rig that i wanted to build out this is a rolling tripod this is a um, magnus kind of um rolling tripod that has wheels on here it has the extra arm because the other piece that has not come in yet is I also have on order the, the remote um, zoom in and out controls as well as the fine focus knob. Um, that's what's also gonna be here as well too. So, so that I can move around, I have a SDI to HDMI converter here that I am gonna plug in. And then I also have um, a bi-directional HDMI to SDI converter on the floor, which is going to be coming from the camera. So that's SDI out. All right. So let me know um, if y'all have any questions on this. Again, my thought of having something like this is meant to be that this would be something for your, if you have manned cameras in your ministry or any type of situation like that so that they have a full view of what's going on. Now, again, this is the, <laughs> this is the plus version. So it only has HDMI out. It doesn't have all the extra functions. Yes, I can bring in a mic and headphone here so I can hear what's going on. Um, but again, it's really cool. Um, Augustine says, I'll buy the new camera off of you for $5. Uh, nah, I can't do that one. But um, let's see. Let's go ahead. You know, you only got your on button right here. Let's go ahead and flip that on. I just heard it click. And there you go. Now, I have the Lumix. I don't even know the name of this lens here. Um, we have the Panasonic Lumix. 45 to 75, 175 millimeter um, f-stop 4.0 to 5.6. That is what I am using for here. Again, this was kind of quick. Um, I don't know the nits on the screen, on its brightness, um, Donnell. I have to look that up. Again, I just started this. What I'm going to do is all of the links to everything I have, descriptions and everything is gonna be down below. This is just meant for y'all to see firsthand what this looks like and I might need to change out the lens because this is a pretty far lens. So right now I am connected to it right now. So if we cut over to it, you're seeing my wonderful kitchen and my mess in here. We spin this all the way around I'm going to look outside and see if I can get anything in focus here. Oh, uh, let's see. Can we, can we get anything? Let's see if we can zoom out on here. And I don't think I'm getting anything. 
So still kind of playing around with all this stuff here, folks. So let's see. That's my brightness knob here. What else? And you can see the camera there. You can see it's like it's just really, really blown out because of everything so let's see if i can roll this up here a little bit closer so we can possibly see outside and then like i said i might need to get put on a different lens here just to see what we can get with it um aaron yes you actually can control the zoom um here this lens does not do it I do have two other lenses that can um, do it. Let me bring up my ATEM software here so I can switch back and forth. Um, so this lens that I have on here, my mistake, because I don't, didn't know that much about this lens. Um, no, I cannot, but I am also, I have on order the controls to where you can have the control to zoom in and the focus knob here that hasn't gotten here yet. Um, so I'm a C, but I do have two other lenses that do work that way. So um, in the software, yes, I can control it. So let me see if I can switch back over here. And again, my apologies, I didn't get a chance to set all of this up because this kind of just caught me really off guard when it came in. And I cannot get this down at all. As you can see, this is just really, really blown out in the shot. So let me let me switch over to a different lens here, and maybe we can get some better performance out of this. Um, so that is my Panasonic Lumix 45 to 175. Now we also, let me try to wind this on my um, micro camera over here. Let's see how that one works out for us. Close this off here. And again, I can see your comments here. Um, so just give me a second to get back and forth. All right, there we go. This is now a Lumix 14 to 42 that I have on here now. Um, they had previous version of this camera that got discontinued very fast. Does this product seem like they're going to be backing it up, uh, be backing it up for a while? I would think so because I saw this, that somebody ordered the original before they announced this and they got the new one in its place. So it's the same price. Um, 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 Daniel, that's the intention. My intention is to actually take this camera and use it in Spring Creek um, to help in their baptismal um, coming up pretty soon. And what input am I on? I'm on six. So I want to see. And again, I don't know if it's because of, I'm not going directly through HDMI. Like I said, I'm going through HDMI into a converter to SDI and then back. So I'm not sure if the controls work. It's not working right now. I have one more lens to try with that, but we'll see. So let's switch over to this lens. And you can see from here what's going on. So this is the lens from my overhead camera and I think it's mainly I'm blown out because of the light that I'm coming from and I need to secure <laughs> this to my mount a little bit better. Um, the other thing I will show is while I'm switching to this, the link, I mean not the link, but the, um, the tally light is not working and I think that's because I'm coming not going directly through HDMI. So what I'm going to do is I have a coupler here. I'm going to disconnect this and I'm going to go directly to this other HDMI here. Actually, AJ, you got a 
fiber HDMI cable. Let me, let me hook that up. Maybe that would give me some better control here. So let's turn this off here. Um, but again, Daniel, I think this would be good if you have people that are going to have manned cameras. Because then this will, again, this is on a rolling dolly, so I can come and go and move this around. And that's the intention um, of doing this at Spring Creek. So I'm going to use this. This is actually a cable I'm using for an 85-inch screen TV. We're going to be mounting Sunday at a church, but, I mean, this will serve its purpose. Let's go ahead and disconnect this. And now we're going to go directly to HDMI. Now, they said this was built specifically for the A10 Minis line. Um, so even if you have an A10 Mini, the base, you'll still be able to control this um, as well. So that's really, really cool. Uh, let me see the next question. If you're using Cat6 SDI extensions for HDMI, I'm under the impression that HDMI Extreme controls do not work. That is correct. That is why I am switching over to this directly. So here's my source. So I think somebody else asked me, would that work? So there's your answer. No, it doesn't. And I don't really want to unwind all of this. I want to make it easy for when I'm using this next week. So I'm only going to unravel just a little bit and we'll plug this have enough to go into the a -ton. put these velcro zip ties yes velcro zip ties not the plastic zip ties that make it a pain and again um like i said i am willing to change i never used any of these fiber cables because um, I was under the impression it wouldn't give me good results, but I have used them now on five installs and I am very, very happy with them. So unless I have some super, super long distance that I, um, that it gets so expensive, I might just start going forward and using these type of cables for that. All right. So now we're going directly over at HDMI. Let's power this back up. All right, there you go. There's our tally light, if y'all can see it here. And let's go to my controls. And does this zoom in and out? No, it doesn't. But the autofocus does work. Let's try that one more time. And let me switch it over so y'all can see what I'm doing. All right, so we're gonna do autofocus. And yep, the autofocus from the, from the camera software actually does work. So that is really cool. And again, I like, you're seeing that the, the tally light and everything is going on. So um, really, really slick. So as you can see, I'm putting it in focus there. Um, yeah, and that's all being done through the camera. So really nice. Now what we're going to do is let me see if I can go through the menus and see if I can show you everything that is going on. Um, monitor HDMI. I don't want to do clean. So y'all should see everything here in a second. Um, grid frame. I'm trying to turn everything on so y'all can see it. So let me see, did that work? Yeah, y'all see the bars at the bottom. But let me let me try and turn everything on so y'all can see it. 
um, display. Okay, yeah, so y'all are seeing everything that's going out now. So, um, hopefully, y'all can see that now. Oh, I don't want to see that. That's my zoom. Oh, okay. Function two is autofocus button directly on the um, software. That's framing grid. All right. So I think, okay, that view is looking better. I think what I'm seeing is I'm seeing the focus where everything is read out there. Um, would need a power zoom lens in order to use the zoom functionality from the ATEM. Yes, you would. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to switch out to a lens that actually is powered. And that's on, this is this pancake lens that I have here for the pocket cinema camera. So let me turn this off here and let's switch this out to one. So again, I am liking this as an option for say that you're using, um, you want to have manned cameras. This will work well if you're like on a riser. I think that's kind of like what Otis was saying as well too, um, to where you can just, and I didn't put a, I did put a cap on. Um, you know, using a riser or like me, I want to use this in a place to where I'm going to have this as a rolling camera. And the fact that, especially if you're going over HDMI, you can control, you can um, do the um, color correction live on the camera, um, which is really, really cool. So you can do the adjustments and everything like that to match your scenes and everything like that. All right, so we have this little pancake lens that is motorized that can be controlled in my pocket cinema cameras in the way. All right, so let's go ahead and mount this one. All right, so let's turn that on now. And as you can see, there it goes, the control and everything like that. Um, um, let me turn off the auto and I'm going to see if I can just one off people's questions here because I'm far and away from my desk. So this is going to be a little interesting to try and adjust people's um, stuff. So as you can see, there's the, um, there's the tally light that is on. Um, so totally superior has a question and I need my screen up so I can see exactly what you're saying. In the market for AI tracking, any suggestions? The ADA, um, I mean the AV cans, AI based one is the only one that I've used that worked very well. I would check that out. I do have a video about that. Um, what other stuff we got? So again, my, my bad, because I wasn't in front of my computer to change any settings and something like that. So let me go back to a couple of questions. Um, back to Caleb. Yes, I, this does have zoom controls on here. The zoom arm that's going to come in will allow me to control the zoom directly from here. Um, but again, this is a motorized lens right now. So if I, man, this is a juggling experience to <laughs> have all of these here. So if I change over to this camera now, so you can see that, and now I'm going to try and do some zoom control directly from the camera. I mean, from the software, excuse me. So I can zoom out and in from there. So what screen is that? That's number two. So as you can see, that is, I'm zooming in and out. And let me see, I can super, 
I need to super source this so y'all can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, and again, I didn't have this set up. So we're going to do super source. Box number one is going to be, that's number six. And then box number two is going to be my left monitor. So you should be able to see it now. All right. So what we're going to do here in the software, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do this knob to zoom in and out. So all of this is being done in software. All right. So really cool. So again, like I said, for some other folks, yes, you can do color correction here. So if we do this color wheel, I'm just going to do some stuff to an extreme just to try and change the colors here. Uh, shoot it up to red. Um, shoot up the green. So again, this is all live that I am doing inside the software. So I'm just going to reset all these back as well, too. All right. So let me go back over to my comments here. And let me know, is there anything in particular that you want me to um, mess around with here? Let's cut back over here to this camera. All right. Um, camera Squad. Can you use a Sony PZ lens to work with this camera and be controlled with the new remotes from Blackmagic? I'm not 100% sure. This is a um, Micro Four Thirds um, mount, so you would need to use some type of speed booster or some type of adapter or something like that. But for will it work with the controls? I'm not 100% sure, um, to be quite honest. So sorry, I can't answer that one. Back to Bishop Michael. So could you use this camera as a main and use PTZ and secondary and do they integrate? I would think they would. I think this would give you more flexibility because you can color match this one to your PTZs um, as this can be controlled right there from the software if you're using the ATEM. So yes, this, the intention is at Spring Creek, they have PTZs and they have um, just a camcorder that honestly the color looked completely different. Um, from there, but I want to have this because like I said, I'm on a, this is a rolling dolly that I can move this around and especially with this um, long HDMI cable, I can come and go almost anywhere with this because um, you can get some of these fiber cables up to like 200 feet. The furthest I've had was 125 and they work well for me, but yes, I think this would be great. And again, that was, that was my intention is for this to be integrated into like a service type of standpoint to where somebody's in the back and this could be on a podium, but more for folks that are really, um, sensitive about wanting to color match their stuff. Again, I know Spring Creek is excited about that. And there's a bunch of other ministries that I've talked to that they like the PTZs, but they want way more granular control for their color um, matching from their cameras with the lights that they have in their sanctuary. Um, let me see what else you got here. Totally superior. Yes, I am using a fiber HDMI cable. Um, in NTCG Wood Green. Greetings from London. Do you know of any good PTZ motorheads for this camera? Well, there are a bunch. Um, I know that, well, I know of a bunch of motorheads that I've used. With the size of this, I'm not sure if they would work. So I'm going to hold off with any thoughts on on those um and my phone is blowing up who is this oh that was twitch but who else is sending me messages okay 
Um, but yeah, I, I, again, I like this because you got to think this now, the only issue I need to figure out, I'm sure with a battery backup that goes with this 12 volt and this connector, you can have it. The only issue I have with this that I do need power. Now, my intention is to have one of these rods here, have a, um, power strip, um, zip tied to this and then have an extension cable. So it's just the extension cable and the fiber HDMI cable that is being dragged behind. That's what I would do in moving this. Now, the Pro, you would only need to have that one fiber um, Ethernet cable and you can come and go as you please. I wanted to get that one, but I had to be responsible with the funds and this was the one that was inside of my budget. Now, what I am gonna look at doing is getting a better lens to work with this. Um, I have a question here. I'm Korean and I ask, is it possible to use the Sony B4SD 3.2 2 extender lens with the Blackmagic Studio camera 4K? Again, I'm not 100% sure. I think with the adapters, if you could use it with the pocket cinema camera stuff, I'm sure it would work. But again, don't quote me on that because this is, when I just started getting into the Blackmagic ones, these are the first cameras I've ever had um, interchangeable lenses. Everything I've been using originally was like camcorders. So I'm stepping into this to up my game to learn more about it because I'm dealing with more churches that don't want PTZs and cameras. They want man type of cameras like this. And even at $12.95, this was easier to get into than some of the Ursa Minis, which actually the 12K, they dropped the price to $59.95. But again, that's a $6,000 camera with the body only. That's not with the battery. That's not with the light. That's not with the screen. That's not with the mount. That's not with the lens. Um, getting those type of cameras, you're talking about like 20 grand and up. Um, Walter here, what lens are you currently using on the studio camera? Right now, this is the, what is the name of this lens? Um, Where's the box? Ah, I gotta look it up. Let me look up exactly which one it was. Where did I get this from? I must have got this from B&H Photo. I believe I did. So give me a second to look up my order history but this was actually um really decently priced lens um this was the olympus digital ed 14 to 42 millimeter 3.5 to 5.6 f-stop easy lens um, can I cut over to here? And I actually got it on sale when I got my, what screen is that? That's number four. It was actually that lens. That's the one that I am using right now. All right. What other questions we got here? Um, live production tips and tools. What is the ISO limit before you start getting noise? I haven't not tested. They said these were good in very, very, very low light. Um, I'll probably try this later tonight. Um, I got a, a whole lot of light coming in here and I really, my blinds are bad. I can't control the lighting that well, but um, I will try and do some, some sample footage as well from this. And that reminds me, what I wanted to test out is the recording natively on this camera. I have a Samsung T5 here to my pocket cinema camera. And I want to test the recording. So it does not come with the locking USB cables. I, I thought it would. Maybe the arms that are coming will. But I want to see how this would work. Now, it only has two USBs, but I think the adapters, um, those little joysticks that are going to come, 
I think they can be daisy chained off of each other. Um, so I don't know. All right, so right now, can y'all see that? Let me cut over to this camera again. That's six. Yes. All right, so I'm not sure. Yeah, you can see that right now it's saying that I have with this drive, because I probably got a bunch of stuff on it, where it's current settings, I can record for 165 minutes. Um, and let's see. It doesn't show y'all the menu on here. So, sorry, I can't show y'all that. Um, I'm going to have to capture this a different way so that y'all can see it. Um, I'm trying to think of how, I don't know. It's, it's, this is, like I said, this is a learning experience for me. So, um, you know, I'm learning at the same time. I'm talking to y'all about this stuff as well, too. So let me move this over so I can see this chat a lot easier. Here, who else we got? Um, um, so live production tips and tools. Yes, I will do a low light test um, later this evening. Um, Donnell wants to know how well does the hood um, work? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's working fine right now for me. I don't have anything that's bleeding in, but they, this, this whole thing can actually come off um, really simply right there. It's just this little tab right here just locks it in place. So you could get something more substantial if you really wanted to. Um, I think that's what they were talking about when they were demoing, talking about, and announcing this camera. Um, Honestly, Robocop Gaming, these are the exact same type of lenses for this. So again, I have not spent, uh, again, I'm an amateur at this stuff. So from a lens standpoint, I have not spent more than $350 on any of the lenses that I have. And so I have this one that I got for $140. Here is another Panasonic Lumix, the 14 to 42 that I got. That was about $250 that I got on sale. And then this other one that I got specifically for this camera, the 45 to 175, this one was going for about like 325. So I would think, um, I mean, they're decent price, but I mean, I've seen other lenses that get super, super, super expensive. So, um, I mean, I guess it's all relative. Um, do the zoom focus controls only work with native um, MFT lenses? Again, I'm not 100% sure. They're working with mine. But again, I don't have any other lenses. I used to have a Nikon, but I sold it to a kid at the church. But I didn't have an adapter to work with it either. Um, so I don't know. Um, I think they would because it's based off of the same stuff as with the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and 6K. So if those can be controlled, I'm assuming that they can. Aaron, um, is, the loom, uh, is the lens zoom speed controllable via the ATEM software? Yes. Yes, it is. Streets of Destiny, how does the lens determine the distance? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's built in. I mean, that that one, I don't know. Um, back to Walter. I just wrote up a proposal last night for three of these, but trying to determine if they want native um, MTF or adapter lenses to Canon, like most do with Blackmagic cameras. I mean, I would think that would be a good call um, because most people have more of the Canon lenses and their um, their mounts than this one. Again, I've wanted to get into that, but again, um, I've, I've thrown a bunch of money at this stuff that I don't know. <laughs> um, so that's why I was getting cheaper lenses because that was in my budget to try out. And some of these lenses are, cost less than some of the adapters of speed boosters, unless I'm looking completely wrong at some of the stuff. But um, it's a learning experience for me. 
Um, Streets of Destiny, um, what, is the stand, what is the standard lenses with this unit? None. It does not come with any. <laughs> um, you just get the body. No lens at all. Thankfully, the Pocket um, Cinema 4K, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K, and the Micro, they all have um, a Micro Four Thirds lens, which made this easy. And that's the reason why I ended up sticking with this because I'm not at the point where I'm not a super professional videographer or a photographer yet. So I'm still building this stuff out. Um, so let me cut back over here because I mean, y'all are here to see the footage as well too of what we got here. And I'm actually gonna do some recording on here now, as y'all can see in my timer. And this is my setup of me watching and looking at y'all. <laughs> so, um, re really nice. I, I have to admit, um, really, really liking this and I need to secure this SSD somewhere. Maybe small rigs is gonna have some type of mount that I can have this attached in some way, shape or form. Um, let's do a picture in picture. Let's do that so that I'm still here and y'all can focus on the, and that's the wrong camera. Where are we at? Upstream, we're gonna use this camera. There we go. And let's change the size of this to 0.4. Slide this over, slide this down. There we go. All right, so now I'm still in the shot so y'all can still see what's going on. All right, um, Enoch. I am doing great. How are you doing? Thanks for stopping by. Um, um, for the 4K Pro, how long can I use the cable with Cat 6A? I'm not 100% sure, but I would think at least 200 feet. At least that's what they mentioned um, there. Make sure it's a pure copper cable. And again, I might dabble with that because again my intention of using this one would be like in studio um type of setup or a church setup but the pro i would do if i'm really want all the fo um, features of better mics um and want that like again i do formation sports here on youtube where we do streaming high school sports and sometimes we're inside some outside i love to try this but then not have to worry about power but have one um, cable sending everything, video and everything. So I am thinking about that. Haven't been decided on it yet. Um, another AJ wants to know, um, is it recommended for churches? I'm thinking what I'm seeing right now. Yes, that was the intention of why I got this to see, would it be a good fit? Again, a lot of churches are going with PTZs because with COVID and everything like that, they don't have as many people to man the equipment. So having everything on a joystick to control multiple cameras has been what a lot of people are jumping to. This is, was an opportunity for me to play around with because we built out a rolling camera for Spring Creek and they were using a um, camcorder on that. And when I saw this come out, I was looking to get another camera anyway for um, sporting events. So this was my chance to try out something like this. So, um, really cool. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, John, this is the same question we've had. Yes, as the lens supports it, yes, you can do zooming in and out with the software. So, like, if I go into the software right now and I am zooming in, obviously you see both of my hands here, but I can zoom in and out in the software with this. Now, again, I'm gonna have the arms here in the future where we can adjust it. So if you did have something like this, you could um, have this and then control everything from the software. That's gonna be the intention where I use it because I'm not gonna have anybody be behind this and I'm putting the lens on it so that I can control it when it's gonna be mounted up on my table or something like that when I'm doing stuff. Robocop Gaming. No, there is no built-in battery. Everything is, it's a power cable right here. Um, I'm sure there are mounts similar to other cameras that you can hook this up to a battery backup, but there is no battery built into this. 
um, live production tips and tools. Try getting used lenses if you want cheaper um, MFT lenses. Also a good tip is to go with wider aperture like a 2.8 and a 1.4, especially considered a small sensor in a camera. Thank you. That's kind of like what I have with this main camera um, and still just trying to dabble with learning some, some of that stuff, but I appreciate that. And there is a, um, there's a local store up here, um, here in Richmond where they sold used lenses. They just didn't have any um, MFT um, lenses. They had a bunch of Canons, a bunch of Nikons, a bunch of Sonys, but they didn't have these. Um, Carl, a speedster is going to have more cost, speed booster I'm assuming, is going to have more cost because of the glass involved. Just adapting works fine in many cases. I have one camera I adapt to an old 150mm Canon lens, looks fantastic. Awesome, thank you, I will look into that. Um, Robocop Gaming, actually natively the overlay isn't there. I turned it on so that y'all can see it. So let me stop recording and inside the software, let me switch back to this camera. And again, I don't know if I can zoom in enough for you to see what I'm doing. Let me adjust this some. Can I zoom in a little bit more? Now that's the most I can zoom in on this. But um, what I wanna do is come over here and we're gonna go to monitoring and HDMI and I'm turning all that stuff off. And then as you can see, now you have a clean output. I just had that stuff on so that y'all could see what's going on. So right now it's a clean output. I see all this, but y'all don't. So hopefully that helps. And my camera is still in the way. Um, let's see what else. How much does it weigh? I don't have a scale. I don't know. I think it feels like it's about like five pounds, but it's not really heavy. Um, MA16B3 is saying reminder just must be a straight HDMI connection, no extensions. Exactly, Floyd. The ATEM software to control this, going from HDMI to SDI, then SDI back to HDMI, which is what I originally had set up, will not give you the camera function. I have a 75 foot um, fiber HDMI cable. That's how I'm controlling everything. Um, Evermore Media. I'm interested in seeing how this will pair with something like the Hollyland Mars 400 for a wireless rig. So am I. I'm waiting to hear about that, um, that extension. There's something in the works. I'm waiting to hear back from that. Um, John Mark just jumped on. Somebody may have asked this already. Pro um, cons versus a pocket cinema camera 4K for streaming. Honestly, um, I've been using the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K for a minute here. Let me undo this. All right, so here's the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, and it looks like it's been on this entire time, which I didn't mean for it to be. Um, honestly, from, you know, obviously it's significantly bigger. Um, you do have the tally light on here the same way. And I, I don't know. I don't want to say this is, um, I think, is more portable than this one. Um, I mean, because you can fit this in a traditional kind of like a camera bag. But when it comes to live streaming, I mean, they both have the exact same lens. I have the exact same controls of everything. So I don't know. It's up to you. I mean, this one actually gives me more mic inputs. Um, this one actually is giving me um, a mini XLR input. So this one does not give me that. Um, I would just say it's the form factor mainly. Um, I, I like both of these. I haven't used this as much as I would like, but I would think this is more of like a studio, a permanent position, like stays on a riser in the back of the sanctuary or on a rolling dolly of how like I'm using this, or like this is gonna be a perfect example of how I use this going into 
um, the baptismal area or um, as long as I have some ND filters, which I do have around here. Now that I just think about it, I could have used those. Um, yeah, that's the only thing I think. I mean, I think either one will work great, to be quite honest. Because um, again, like I said, this is what I was using um, this entire time um, before I went to the Sony. So let me set this over here so I don't drop it. But yeah, I, I really, I just really like this form factor here. Um, back to Walter. Considering long runs for church, how would you run multiple over Ethernet using the A2 Mini Pro? I mean, it'll be a one way. Um, if you're using the Pro, it's an actual additional $900 converter box that all the connections go to that, which you would have to convert again. Um, to that and then one ethernet goes and then I would just have a roll of cable on here um, and it's one way um, for there. So again, I, I haven't thought about that. If I was to do this type of camera, um, what I would do is have the moving one be the pro. So I only have that one copper cat 6A cable going to that camera that's moving around and the other ones that are on risers would be just the, the plus and just have it that way. Now, the Pro does give you the intercom and headsets for you to be able to talk back and forth. So if you want something like that, then yeah, you would go all of them with Pro, but I still would, I would just wire those directly SDI up to my switcher and have the only one that's roaming be on that. Or that would be the one kind of like what you're asking. I would get the pocket similar camera 4K or 6K, but that Hollyland Mars 400 on it and then you don't have any wires and you just have the battery of the camera moving around. So I think back to that question on the pros and cons, the pocket cinema camera has a battery. So you don't need to be plugged in. I mean, it's not gonna last very long unless you get an extender to have more batteries on it. This one has to be plugged in unless you get the pro and it still has to be plugged in, but there is no battery unless you attach it to it. Um, let's see. Back to Walter, um, definitely be a plus. I'm thinking of two of these for mains and then a couple of pocket similar cameras for backline and roaming. Exactly, that's kind of the same thing I would think. Um, I mean, again, for anybody else who watches my stuff talking about media ministry stuff, this is, I, I don't want y'all to think that just because we're talking about this, AJ's endorsing, these are the type of cameras you go to. No, you start with wherever your budget is available. Um, you know, some people, hey, you're still using your phone. That's fine. The next grade, people have moved to cameras or DSLRs, camcorders or DSLRs. That's fine, too. Other people have now moved over to PTZs. This is where you're starting to get into that, I mean, really, really high-end type of stuff to where this is where you're trying to control the color live. This is the type of control that a lot of those cameras you can do but it's not as user friendly to dial this stuff in. So don't think that this is like, oh, AJ's only endorsing this stuff now for your ministry. No, I'm like, whatever you can use to help spread the gospel, that's what I'm about. But again, people I've asked about it, it was inside of a price range that was reasonable for me. So that's why I wanna play around with this type of stuff. But yeah, that setup, Walter, that you're talking about, that's ultimately what I would like to do in my, um, my broadcast stuff for sporting events and stuff like that have a couple of cameras like this on the sideline so we can get get the action and stuff like that but then also have one of the pocket cinema cameras wirelessly connected this inside the teams on the sidelines um chasing down um the running back that's going across um for a touchdown stuff like that um stan wants to know is it easy to change the tally light number? Why, yes it is, because the tally lights come in a bag of one to 20. So I don't have one on here, so let's go ahead and just show you how easy it is. It, they literally just slide in place. Let me grab one here. So we got number, number one. Number one. And they actually 
they actually bend and there's two little dips that lock them in place. Let me bend it here. AJ, why don't you just turn the camera towards you so you can do it. There you go. So you just got to bend it and it pops into place and then I don't have any fingernails. There. And then you just push it back and it comes right out. So not very difficult. Yeah, fingernails, that'll make it work <laughs> better. But I cut mine, so I don't have as much as I used to. All right, let's see what the next one here. Um, Back to Carl, speed boosted, just remember that a 100 millimeter film lens will equate to approximately 200 millimeter on an MFT, so choose focal length wisely. Sounds like the, um, um, the Last Crusade, <laughs> Indiana Jones, choose wisely, <laughs> but thank you though. Um, Donnell, do you know if the Pro model can also be controlled by the A10 Mini using HDMI? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Um, Robocop Gaming is Blackmagic Studio Camera 4K Plus or Blackmagic Studio Camera Perfect Pro is perfect for church. I mean, it all depends on your setup. It really does. Um, if you have room to be able to move around and this fiber cable is fine, I think that will work. If not, and, but you want something, because um, again, even though this HDMI cable, I still need power for this. So I would also have to include an extension cable or something for this camera. Um, the Pro, if you are limited on power and you want to have very little, you could go with the Pro and then, but again, the Pro requires the converter box, which is an additional $900. This is, this model, the Plus, is $1,295. The Pro is $1,795, but for that converter box, add another $900 on top of it, but then also add on top of it um, the lens. So I like this one because, yeah, you can get an extension cable from Lowe's Home Depot for $25, and then you get one of these long HDMI cables, $60, and unless you got people that are just nerds about seeing cables on the floor, I think this one will work good. Um, Stan... I have an original ATEM television studio. Would these cameras work with my switcher? Now, the original HTM television studio, are you talking about the, um, the gray one? That's what we originally had. It would work, but you would have to convert this to SDI. So you would need um, one of these converters here. Um, well, actually, the opposite of this. You would need an HDMI to, I mean, yeah, you would need an HDMI to SDI converter. That's what you would need. Come on, product shot. There you go. You would need an HDMI to SDI for that to work. Or, let me, duh, AJ, the ATEM the Television Studio has HDMI in. It should work. But again, this is in 4K, so you would have to turn this down to work with that. Um, I don't know if it lets you would change the resolution on here. Um, to what natively is output. Like, I'm looking at the settings right now. There are no adjustments in here. So if I can zoom in here, it is only Ultra HD. <laughs> there is no setting to adjust it to anything different. So it's only 4K. So um, you would actually need to have some type of up-down cross converter or um, dominator a decimator or whatever it's called to scale that down for your regular atom television studio would not work with this um the atom mini is working because it's scaling it down um kevin what type of lens mount does the plus have versus the pro both of them are micro four thirds um Can I do a video about the Panasonic CX-8? It, that all depends. Uh, 
See, honestly, I was looking at buying that camera um, originally for sports, but then looking at that, I was able to get all of this with this stuff for significantly less than that. So I'm not 100% sure. So no promises, but you never know. Maybe. George Santos. Is it possible with the pro version to record 4K to the SD and and send 1080p signals to the ATEM over? Yes, I believe so, because that's what I was recording here. So let's see what the output was. I recorded for quite a while. I'm sure it was only, I mean, there's no way to scale it down, so I'm sure this was recording at uh, 4K. So let me... Oh, I'm still logged into my church computer. That was from the Q&A. Um, let me cut over to the computer here. Oh, and I'm running out of space. Let's see what we got. What screen is that? That's number four. All right, so let's open up my computer here. No, that's not it. That's the wrong drive. We want the Samsung. Now it's not being detected. Do I need to change my cable? Oh, there it goes. So let's see. So it was recording I got to be careful because I don't even know what this recorded. Hold on. Does it... Did it not record? Hmm. Huh. Hold on because I think the date is off. On the camera. Yeah, because that was the product. Recording. I think it's struggling to open this when I'm playing it. Let me open this up in DaVinci Resolve and let me see if I can play it that way so I can see what this is in. Um, Power Jam DJ says that he just got his um 4k pro today awesome congratulations um and let me turn that full screen off let me get back to my chat so i can see what y'all are saying to me and like i said folks when this is over i'm going to have a link to everything that i'm doing um as well um can you do way true life tv wants to know and where is my where's my super suit um there it is so i can see what y'all are saying um can you do some comparison videos between the various video mixtures based on budgets yes that is the plan in the future and i'll work on that um will the up down cross converter still carry tally and ccu i don't know um i have one at my church um, I need to see if I can grab that and I'll do a test, um, later in the week. Actually, it's not going to be later in the week cause I'm going to be in New Jersey next week, um, on a, doing some training. So I, but I will make a note to test that out. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't cause it's still going through HDMI, but again, HDMI to SDI stripped that stuff out. So we need to test it out. So let me see if my video plays in here and this was what I recorded straight off the camera so let me do a full screen turn that off 
I'm gonna let y'all see screen number three. All right, so this is, get rid of the comments, AJ. So if we go back to the original footage, which is right here. Yeah, see this was recorded in 4K. It was recorded in 4K the entire time. So it's coming through as 1080p, but yes, it was being recorded in um, 4K. And it actually was using the Blackmagic codec. And it doesn't look like it gave me an option to change the codec either. And yeah, that, that, that's a beast of a file to try and play through. Um, I think the file size was like um, 30 gigs for, um, what was the duration of this video? Yeah, it was 30 gigs for five minutes. <laughs> so we definitely got to play with the settings on that. Um, let's see. Let me get this back on the screen so I can see here. Looks like you're one of the first with a live demo. Shame this doesn't have an EF or B4 option. That's a deal breaker for us. Understood. Yeah, and I think this is, um, I mean, this is a, a unique taste for everybody. Um, it's, it's not meant for everybody, um, but I think, honestly, this is a good intro for anyone who may be trying to look into this type of camera. Um, let me give a better shot of something for y'all to look at instead of just, I mean, you can try to set this so you can look outside. Maybe I should change the lens so that I can get a better adjustment so y'all can see outside. Let me actually do that. So let's turn this off. And we're going to put this other lens on here. Where's my Olympus cap? There we go. Got to protect the lenses. And then this is the Panasonic 45 to 175. Let's see what else we got here. Um, what is the picture quality of these cameras and would they work well in churches? I think they're going to be great from a picture quality standpoint. And that was the whole goal is the to see about this at church. Like I said, I'm going to take this setup with me to Spring Creek um, where I'm going to be doing their baptism, recording their baptism stuff um, this coming Sunday. So hopefully that will help. And I need to really dial this in. I think my, there we go. That looks significantly better. So let's zoom out a little bit. I'm zooming into the water tower um, from across the way. That's number six. So, really, really nice picture. So if I zoom, I mean, that's as far as I can zoom out in this lens. So let me get that out of here and get this off. Yeah, so really, really nice. I'm pretty far away. But I mean, y'all could see, let's see how tight of a shot I can get. Somebody coming out their car all the way over there. And I'm trying to get in focus. Yeah, so I mean, really, really beautiful picture. Hope I don't catch nothing I ain't supposed to see. Because <laughs> this is just random. Um, that's the water tower from there. Yeah, so really nice. So I think this is going to be a good lens for like me being in the back of the church 
in being able to watch or see anybody um, that's on the pulpit or something like that. So let me see what other questions y'all got. Um, I thought um, the highest the A10 mini switches could take in was 1080p60. Anything higher would be a black would be black screen. Well, no, it's yes, it's sending that in, but it's scaling it down. So let's let's do this. I'm gonna unhook this, and I'm gonna hook it up to my TV right behind me, and let's see what signal is actually being sent. Because anything that's plugged into the A10 is actually gonna scale it down. The A10 Mini is going to scale it down. So, let's see here. Plug this up so we can see what's actually coming out there. turn the volume down because last thing I want is for this stuff to blast that must not be the right input hmm not getting anything oh, that was a PlayStation I didn't mean to turn that on You're not getting anything on that. Let me turn that off. Turn that back on. And camera on. There we go. So, very, very nice. So, let's see. Info. Yeah. 3840 by 2160 at 60 frames per second. Very, very nice. So, 4K at 60 frames a second. Um, Way True Life TV wants to know, is there any best alternative for Pro Presenter? You could try presenter by worship extreme that's another one that i like that doesn't cost anything um, for their free model you just need internet it gives you what you need um which i think is really cool um i should have just did this the whole time so y'all can see it that way um let's see what else paul wants to know has it recorded in black magic raw yes it did um i need to really see about the settings but like i said i haven't mess with anything on here and it looks like it's only giving me a black magic raw recording setting um i can change it to and y'all can't see this so this is why i need to put the output back so y'all can see um where's that director on um display Oh, heck, that was the, the LUTs turned on. That's, I mean, that's night and day difference right there. Um, let's see, fo area focus, y'all don't need to see that. False color, um, safe grid, okay. Um, frame guide, what else we got? Status director. Okay, now I, I see the setting here. It's giving me a HDMI output um, right there of 4K or 1080p. So if I switch it here, now the output is at 1080p. Yeah, 1080p 60. I don't know if you can see it, but it switches. But now I'm back to 4K. Trying to turn everything on so y'all can see. Uh, it doesn't give me a way to show you um, all the menus that I'm in so that you can see that. And this date is wrong. It's saying everything is 
the 8th, I mean the 17th. It's actually the 20th and is at 136. I'm going to have to, like I said, it's a bunch of stuff I'm going to have to update with this because I literally just took it out of the box when we were doing our Q&A. Um, let's do a couple of ones and then we're going to be shutting it down here soon. Um, Stan, on a monitor, HDMI, oh, yep, thank you. <laughs> we just went to. Um, are the tablet lights only red and green? Is there a different color when in preview? No, it's only green and red. Red is when it's active right now. Um, green is when it's getting ready to go to that shot. Now, it's not showing right now because we're connected directly to the TV and we're not connected to the ATEM at all right now. Um, which is the best way to extend HDMI signal? Honestly, I like SDI. That's what I normally use. Um, SDI can go uh, 300 feet. I mean, you could go to fiber if you really wanted to. That's expensive. That's like $150 per adapter converter. And then fiber optic cable, you can go 29 miles. Um, for me, in most of my installs, I usually use SDI. What I'm using now, if it's under 75 feet, I will use a HDMI um, fiber optic HDMI cable. That's me. And that's a really nice picture. And that's what the, the LUTs turned on. I think the other one was just a um, raw um, shot. I forgot the proper term for it. Hey, you are welcome. Um, back to Walter. Could you still see a use case for the older cinema cameras today? Yeah. I mean, I think that would be perfect if you're doing um, with like they were talking about, somebody was in here talking about the Hollyland wireless. You can use that if you're doing a baptism outside, you want to have events outside. Um, there's, there's a purpose for every camera. Like again, I don't use the pocket cinema camera 4K as much. Um, that was really meant for me to do more custom video work. Um, which I will still use. That pairs well with my drone and it matches the coloring with that. This I like, it gives me the flexibility and then it's just more of a permanent solution. That's for me. But yes, I think the cinema, oh, and also the cinema camera, I use that if you're using that for drones or you want to use shots where you don't want to put a lot of stuff in the way, I would say yes for that one. Because I still use that for my top down shot. Um, Street News Now. Um, the computer you're running DaVinci Resolve on, what is your CPU, RAM, and GPU? My CPU is a Ryzen 9 3900X, 64 gigs of 3200 um, megahertz memory, and my GPU is a EVGA RTX 2070. Otis, you're back again. You can mount it in the media booth in Sanctuary at the back of the church with a little... Uh, um, that a little above ground level. Yeah, yep, absolutely. <laughs> I'm too techy for worship extreme. <sighs> Raven Russell, hold on, I gotta, gotta sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. So what servo lens would you recommend for it? I can't think of any um, Micro Four Thirds that would be great. Honestly, what I really want to get is the, um, I wanna put a speed booster on, honestly, my pocket cinema camera stuff and go with the Sigma um, 1.4 um, f-stop. I forgot, it's the big one that everybody's really talking about. I gotta I got, I got um, you know, sell some more plasma so I can get that one. That was going for like $700, $900 for that lens. That's what I'm thinking. Um, again, in this type of setup, I want one that is a zoom controlled lens so that when we get the arms, everything can be controlled that way. That's me. Um, last couple of questions here, folks. Um, do you have a powered lens attached? Yes, I do. Right now, I do. And that is the uh, Panasonic Lumix 45 to 175. Um, that's what I have right now that is a powered lens. See, exactly. This is what I think when I take this to Spring Creek, they're going to be like, what in the world did you upgrade the camera from last week? Because again, last week, this was the camera I was using. 
I was using my, my Sony. That's what I was using. And this, I mean, this is still a good shot. That's 4K. This is 4K 60, and I just looks significantly better, I, I personally feel. And I'm going to probably do a side-by-side -side with these. Did it crop in with the 4K, or am I dreaming? Um, let me see. Let me switch it back. Well, I mean, well, I would think, because I'm outputting, it might do something different when I'm outputting here, but recording um, might be different. So, I don't know. Hey coach, thanks for dropping by. Thank you so much. So um, thank y'all so much, folks. I mean, this was um, just wanted to get out here because it was like it was new that first came out. I mean, we were doing our Friday Q and A with AJ, and then we got a knock on the door, and the stuff came in as well as this um, mount. Actually, this rolling tripod I actually got for another church, but it was delivered to the wrong place, so it took. Um, they considered it a loss because they couldn't get it back. I think FedEx delivered it to the wrong place. So the seller sent me a new one, and here it is. So yay. So um, I'm really excited about what, what we can do with this type of stuff um, as well. I'm going to take the last two comments, and then we're going to go from there. Um, Victor, oh, where's my mouse? There you go. Victor wants to know, can you stream on an A10 Mini? Extreme to YouTube or Facebook and use the streaming bridge in a remote location at once. No, you can't. That's similar to what I'm doing at Spring Creek right now. We are the A10 Mini Extreme that they have in the sanctuary. That is streaming to the. Sh Let me take it back. I have the A10 Mini Pro that's going to be streaming. That's in the baptismal area that this camera is going to be hooked up to now is streaming to the A10 Minis. Ah, let me go back. This camera that's connected to the A10 Mini Pro that's in the baptismal building at Spring Creek is streaming to the streaming bridge that's in the sanctuary that's connected directly to the streaming bridge. Um, to the A10 Mini Extreme, excuse me. That A10 Mini Extreme is connected to OBS over a USB cable and that computer is streaming to Facebook and everything. But the A10 Mini Extreme is streaming to a Raspberry Pi DIY streaming bridge that is connected directly to the TV inside of the building with the baptismal pool because we couldn't run cables between. So to answer your question, no, you can't. The ATEM can only stream to one location at a time. And before you ask, it was asked on the Facebook, you can't stream directly to um, you can't stream directly to the ATEM, the streaming bridge. And hold on, I got my, my friend here. I am I am doing a live stream right now and they're, they're they she's calling me right now. So we're getting ready to wrap up. Right now, they can't. You can't see them, but they, so we're live streaming right there. You, you wave and nobody can see you. But um, I will. I will call you back once I get off of here. <laughs> um, but yeah, that it. I would honestly say I like the streaming bridges, but I think there's some type of proprietary stuff that's only letting Black Magic stuff stream to it. Because I've tried to get into it with Vimeo, OBS, trying to stream directly to it, and it just spins. I think it's looking for some type of handshake. But um, Aaron, um, I tagged him in the video. He actually um, showed a tutorial on how to use the Raspberry Pi 4 and higher. Um, actually, I think I'm using a three and it works in fine for me um, to make a DIY version. And I'm able to stream to that with the ATEM or with anything else. That's what I'm using. All right. Um, on TV channels, thank you so much. I'm glad y'all got something out of it. Um, last question is, is there a lag when connected to the ATEM Mini Pro? No, there is not. I have not noticed any. All right. So thank you so much, folks. If y'all don't mind doing me a favor, please make sure that you hit that like button, 
consider subscribing and hit that bell that way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry where we talk about tips tricks and strategies and reviews to help you with all this stuff and really excited about what we're going to do with this be on the lookout i am going to take this is going to be my setup when we go to spring creek this sunday um, to test out everything so really looking forward to that um, Again, if I didn't get your questions answered, you can hit me up at questions at ajhomes.com and I will give me 48 to 72 hours to get back in touch with you. And we will see what we can do to help you out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day, evening, afternoon, wherever you are all over the face of the planet. And if you're a part of the media ministry, thank you for what you're doing. You are helping share the message throughout the entire world. This is AJ, folks. We will see y'all on the next video. Later.